In our last episode, Jason and I flew the Cessna P210 from Oshkosh to Sioux City, Iowa, on our way back to California from AirVenture. After a good night's rest, we got a really early start, loaded up, and headed to the airport to try to make it back to California the same day. We're gonna fly here from Sioux City. He's gonna drop me off in Reno. Hopefully the flight today goes pretty well. There's a lot of uh, scattered thunderstorms along the way, so we're gonna be dodging those and we'll see what else we encounter. No runway. All right, so, so this first leg, we're going to Scott's Bluff which is Bravo, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. I guess it's better than going to BFE. <laughs> That's where we are now. We're in BFE going to BFF. Yeah, we're just passing over Nebraska. Look around. That's about what the whole state looks like. All right, it's Scott's Bluff traffic. Train 731 Hotel Romeo is over the top of the runway. Uh, 5,000 feet entering left traffic. Runway zero. All right, you've got two wheels out there. Yep, two wheels. Okay, below 130, flaps are going 20. All right, their carburetor heat, there isn't any. Gas is good, undercarriage is down and locked. The green light and verification on the wheels. Mixture is full rich, prop, set full forward. All right, the aircraft is ready to land. After an uneventful first leg, we landed at Scotts Bluff, Western Nebraska. And we're gonna take this sweet ride, this crew car, over to grab some food while they fuel the airplane. And then we'll hopefully get back on our way. We gotta check the weather though. It's looking a little dodgy. Was it good? Oh man, the burrito? That was amazing. We're gonna try to get to Wendover. I mean, we have a convective segment here. We're going to have to use a lot of caution because obviously we're not going to fly too close to thunderstorms. But, and, and, and to make it even worse, we have this little corridor here between the restricted areas. So we can't do a lot of deviating. Like if it turns out we have to go 30 miles north, we might not be able to do that. We might have to turn around and go back to Ogden or something. Um, but when I turn the radar on lowest tilt, it should show us if it's hitting the ground. Oh yeah, so, um, it, it shrinks, it's not altogether gone. We do, we do know we're flying into a system that has the potential of creating thunderstorms even as we sit here and have this conversation. <laughs> so uh, we just have to have a lot of outs. Where are we gonna stop and where are we gonna double back to if we get in over a Okay, cool. That segment from noon to four o'clock about, and we'll be going through there. We should look at the Salt Lake City TAF because that's right in the middle of that area, right? So one o'clock, few 10, scattered 12,000, broken 18,000. Then by five o'clock PM, thunderstorms in vicinity, cumulonimbus. So we should be out of that area by that time, but it could move in earlier. So or it could be coming from the west, which is where we're headed. So we'll have to see. Like it might be forecast here at that time, but two hours earlier at Wendover, two hours earlier still at Elko, you know what I mean? It might be moving. I'm actually a little nervous about getting out of Reno. We got some food, headed back to the airport, and gonna take off our window. Here we are. Oh, maybe that's a drive-in movie theater right by the airport. That's awesome. Uh, Scott's Bluff traffic. Centurion 731 Hotel Romeo, departing runway 30 with a left turn. Engine gauges are checked. Airspeed's alive. Uh, 200 feet, 100 knots, positive rate of climb, flaps up. We got an hour, 42 minutes, 240 miles until Ogden, and that's when I start seeing a bunch of this messy precipitation here. Yeah, that's and a little dodgy. We'll see what we're feeling when we get in there. We need yeah. an out going in there. What's yeah. So we're out, there's like two or three airports. Rock Springs, what all, are those? All along the way, there's, let's say, Evanston, okay. Ida County, and uh, Fort Bridger. There it is. Uh, Fort Bridger right there. And then even... There's nothing at Fort Bridger. 
South back. Wyoming Regional. Yeah, we're, uh, zoom out a little bit. Heber City is down here. That's already covered. Okay, that's where my cousin is. Uh, no, Heber City's right here. Yeah, okay, it may be covered. But um, anyway, so it, there's a lot of airports in this area. So what do you think we have enough fuel if we got to Ogden and we're like too dodgy, we could come back to one of these two airports and get some fuel waited out? Yeah. Yeah, and we may be better off if we could going to Heber City just in the off chance we had to stay there overnight or at least by Park City, Utah. Right, except we'd be kind of coming down into this. Yeah. We might get caught between these two little ranges, so yeah, yeah. be careful there. Yeah, let's see to, um, well, we'll just have to see what it looks like when we get closer. We may just stop short instead of having to double back just based on what we see. You know? Okay. It's all cast as this weather information. Convict segment 51 Western from Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah. 95 Central, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming. All flights are street I hope you're enjoying this flight video. Trips like this are only made possible by our awesome SoCal Flying Monkey Patreon members and sponsors like the sponsor of today's video, Omaze. Omaze is offering you a chance to win a Baja Forged Ford Bronco while supporting Pelotonia an organization committed to accelerating innovative cancer research. You can go to omaze.com slash SoCalFlyingMonkey to enter for your chance to win. Omaze gives away amazing prizes and experiences, all while donating to various chosen charities around the world. They take a sustainable approach to fundraising, and that means nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and focus instead on serving the needs of their communities. The winner of the sweepstakes will forge their own path with this modern, rugged take on the legendary Bronco of the 60s and 70s. It's the ultimate off-roading machine with 4x4 drivetrain, kick-ass suspension, and a fully transformed interior with modern features. Y'all know we've been doing some Mexico flying lately, and if I won this bad boy, I think I'd have a hard time deciding if I would fly or drive. I'd have to figure out a way to do both. Donations support Pelotonia, who are committed to accelerating innovative cancer research, including enhanced treatments and therapies, the next generation of research talent, immuno-oncology, and prevention and early diagnosis. Don't miss this opportunity for your chance to win the custom Baja Forged Ford Bronco. Go to omaze.com slash SoCalFlyingMonkey. And don't forget, donations support the amazing work of Pelotonia. Yeah, I just think people don't realize when you're flying west, you know, people like think about it like crossing mountains. But the reality is, pretty much the whole way until you get to Reno, the mountains are easily avoidable. Like the earth comes up, right? What's the earth below us? Maybe... What are we, about 4,000 feet AGL here at 10,000? So the ground down there yeah. is about 6,000 right now, something like that, right? Right, yeah. And and there's an 11,700-foot peak or whatever you said, but it's just one isolated peak over there. There's no peak to our right. You know, it's not like right. it's not like we really have to go anywhere near that mountain, you know? Right. But when you get to Reno, all of a sudden, the Sierra Nevada, that's like a fence. It's like all that stuff we fly around in the mountain trip. That's the hardest part of crossing. That's yeah. really the hardest part. But if all you're doing is going the Pioneer Trail, like Interstate 80, like we are, yeah, path of least resistance. So that's the Pioneer Trail right there. I mean, that's what the settlers used. The, it's the flattest, lowest, easiest path, you know? And you got Cheeto, Cheeto hands on the controls here. That's, that's why you're flying. That's why that's your hands are on the control. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did get Cheeto hands on the down trail. Oof. Oh, yeah. Kicking the pants right there. But we'll see between Wendover and Reno, which is where we want to go. You can see there's quite a bit of stuff, so we'll see this next yeah. next leg after this one. Uh, you know what you're saying on the ground? With all this technology on board, as long as we have good outs and we know exactly where we're going to go if things don't look right, uh, sometimes it makes a lot of sense to sort of dynamically plan as you go. Yeah. Once you've briefed yourself and you basically know the whole game, Six five zero Julian Charlie. Figure it out step by step. And also, we're going to see if they make us descend to get under the Salt Lake Bravo, or if they're going to clear us through it. I mean, we could just go up to twelve five and go over it. Also, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll ask him if he wants us at twelve five, or if we can get a Bravo. Yeah, fifty five thirty nine. Salt Lake Center seven three one Hotel Romeo. Seven three one Hotel Romeo. Totally good. Uh, yes, sir. Just wanted to plan ahead a little bit here. Uh, should we climb to 12,500 to clear the Bravo, or do you think we'll be able to get cleared through the Bravo at 10,500 north of Ogden? And one Hotel Romeo, uh, we were talking to Approach a few minutes ago, and they said just leave you as is, and as soon as they take the handoff, I'll have you make that question with them, but I think you're going to be all right. Roger that. Thank you. 721 Hotel Romeo. All right, that's all I wanted to know. That's cool. Yeah. Salt Lake Approach, uh, Centurion 731 Hotel Romeo, 10,500. How close are we to the Bravo? 
Uh, we are five miles. Number 731, Hotel Romeo, Solid Cup Road, Roger, maintain via far clear through the Bravo Airspace, altimeters 3011, uh, 3010. Okay, clear through the Bravo Airspace, uh, 3010, one Hotel Romeo. That was easy enough. Awesome. That was a pretty, uh, like, I, you don't usually get Bravo clearances that are that open. Like, he didn't give us an altitude or a heading or any kind of restriction. He just cleared into the Bravo. I guess it's just not busy. Yeah, I guess not. I'm just looking ahead here a little bit, like, got to avoid that restricted area, right? Yeah, I think our heading is working for that, right? Our heading's good. Inbound so yeah, there's a the cell so here two, that's kind of building. Yep. Sure and moving towards us. Yeah, 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 I see. It's moving up, up, and we're kind of penned by the restricted area there. Uh, I see. And the distance from our course to where it is, I think, is about 15 miles or something. Uh, and, how, and how far are we from that point on the course? What's that distance? 28 miles. So we're going to cross that. That's where my E6B watch comes in handy. Like like 12 minutes. Okay, we're going to cross it 12 minutes. It's that one moving toward our course. I think it's it's that stuff there yep, moving yep, towards our it. course. I think we're going to I think we're going to outrun it. I mean, we go right up against the restricted area. I wonder does it, what's the number on the restricted area? Yeah, I was going to say does it make sense to see if it's uh it's 6404 Bravo and Delta. 6404 Alpha. It'd be good to know, right? It gets yeah. to go up there. Uh, approach 731 Hotel Romeo. Is the restricted area 6404 uh, Bravo Delta hot today? Uh, affirmative, always. Always, thank you. From uh, one Hotel Romeo, contact approach on 126.25. 126.25, one hotel room, yeah. So yeah, we can turn and outrun it if we need to. I think we're gonna beat it there though, personally. I think you're probably right. Yeah, it would just be a 180 back to Ogden. Yep. Okay, this'll take you around the restricted area. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, you can see that rain coming down over there. Yep, we're just gonna beat it. We're gonna get in front of it is all. But yeah, I see it. You could get a little right if you wanted. Yeah. For the restricted area, by the way. Yeah, we're crossing the storm front right now. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, so we're just going, just going right by this. I guess we're probably about 15 miles away. Centurion One Hotel Romeo, contact Salt Lake's uh, Make It Clover Control, 134.1. Okay, Clover on 134.1, uh, One Hotel Romeo. Clover approach, Centurion 731 Hotel Romeo, 10,500 VFR Wendover. 3731 Hotel Romeo, Clover, Wendover, Altimeter, 3012. 3012, one Hotel Romeo. That was tight though, man. Another 10 minutes back, and I'm not sure we would have gotten in front of that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it might have blocked the path. We yeah, had to, I, I know. We would have had to wait an hour or two. Maybe longer, but we got in front of it. I mean, will they ever let you fly in a restricted area? I'd be like, oh, hey, man, i got to get around this storm. I'm just VFR. Not around here. I mean, like, you could declare an emergency, but you probably would have some paperwork. Yeah, that would be I mean, pretty, they're not playing around with Utah. Like, that's what he says. Like, it's always hot. Yeah. Always. So we're 23 minutes from Wendover. All right, let's do our arrival stuff, yeah? Wow, it's really pretty. Yeah. Those are the Bonneville Salt Flats out there. Oh, uh, yeah, where they do the racing. Yeah, you'll see it when we land in Wendover. It's pretty rad. You fly in, and it's all just white salt. So the ADSB weather says 05011. That would make 8 the best runway. It's right traffic for runway 8. So we would fly over midfield and a right downwind runway 8. Wow. That's crazy, man. Not wild. Yeah. What's also really beautiful is the shadows yeah. across that mixed with the, you know, pattern right. in the earth. Right. That's really cool. Yeah, it really is. So we're almost 7,000, and pattern altitude is 5,200. That's cool. Yeah, we'll come back one more inch here. No weather, all right, no weather. Well, do you use your ADSB weather, that's fine. Yep, I got the field in sight there. Yeah, I see uh, eight. All right, good, me too, below 130, flaps 20. And we'll turn into our downwind. And wind over traffic, and train 7 through one Hotel Romeo is right downwind, now runway eight, wind over. All right, gear is down. Can't get the airplane down. One thing, there's like this rising air. I'm gonna square this turn because you got 10,000 feet of runway. Yeah, I know. So it's like, come on, girl, sink. It would drive me crazy if I was my student. <laughs> We 
We made it to Wendover, Utah. This place is pretty cool. Wendover was an old Air Force base where they trained World War II bomber pilots, including the B-29 crew that carried out the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We'll jump into that in the next episode along with the toughest leg of this trip back to California. Let's pain ourselves into a small corner there. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified for part three. Thanks for coming along on the journey with us.